Our Computex 2023 coverage is made possible by Thermaltake, Lian Lee, G-Skill, CableMod, Team Group, Asus, XPG, and Seasonic. And we are at the ADATA XPG 2023 Computex booth. Now it is packed here. I do apologize if it is a little bit noisy with the surrounding noise, but I'll try the best I can. Now you're probably wondering what we are looking at. This is a monster setup here. We have four 4090s all running flat out. Now as you can see on the screen, this is sort of tossing between 1600 to 1900 watts. So all these GPUs are going flat out. We have one GPU, the first GPU in Fermark going flat out. And then we have the second three, the GPU two, three and four are running in the Optane benchmark. Now this thing is a monster and you might be wondering why and how. Well, as to how, this is running XPG's new Fusion 1600 watt PSU. Now this is special. There's a lot going on here. I will bring someone in from XPG to talk a little bit more about this because there is a lot more that we can talk about about this PSU that I know about. So this PSU is fully digital. It is a Delta OEM, so it is going to be top of the line. And this setup here is from Cybernetics, and we all know that they do the sort of the uh, platinum rating or how a PSU is rated, whether it's uh, gold, platinum, or titanium. So they've made this board up to do all the testing on this PSU. Now on this screen here, you might be wondering what this is. This is their XPG uh, Prime software. It's not just for this power supply. If you're running other things like XPG's hub, their fans, their memory, you can control all that. But just on this system, we are specifically looking at this Fusion uh, 1600 watt PSU. Now at the moment, the DC out wattage is about 1700 watts, which I mentioned before. That's just reading it. We can do a lot more here. We can change the rail from multi-rail to single rail. I'll get some other screens on B-roll, but we can change uh, the voltage, the uh, 12 volt, different voltage rails up or down. Obviously that's gonna be within reason. You're not gonna be able to smash 15 volts on the uh, 12 volt rail because you don't wanna do that. So things with it in reason. And we've also got like the efficiency it's running at, and then also the temperature. So. I will say it is warm around here, but that's not the PSU. We got four 4090s all running together in this custom unit here. So what I might do now is I'll bring, uh, I'll bring Luca in now from XPG and he, um, he can talk a little bit more about the system just isn't just to showcase how good this PSU is. They actually use this for a lot of research, research examples and so on. So I'll just bring Luca in and we can discuss a little bit more. Thank you so much for having me here. And guys, you, you do a really awesome job. We're very happy for all the contribution. So this is Project Zeus now running at its best, which is uh, AI loads. What we're doing right now here, this is a, a actually mini GPT. It's a sort of a, a, a iteration open source of ChatGPT1. And uh, we have uh, actually data that is uh, from Anthony Capathi, which is uh, the head of AI at Tesla. So he has an open source uh, data set over there, which is uh, actually using a Shakespeare play, Cornelianos, Death of Caesar. Uh, very funny. And so we're, we're actually loading this uh, to, to all GPUs. We modify the original source code to run on multi-GPU. And you can see all four GPUs are actually using solidly all 96 gigabyte of, uh, uh, of GDDRX, um, GDDR6X. But it, the system is running actually at 500 to 700 watts. Okay, uh, so, so, that's, so each GPU has 24, so that's where you get the 96 from. Just in case someone thought there was 96 each. So it just adds, adds all of them together. That's correct. And uh, so they're all running in parallel, all doing uh, uh, CUDA type of, uh, uh, type of uh, machine deep learning. And we use uh, TensorFlow on Python for running this uh, because we want to run it on Windows. And that's uh, really what's doing right now. So uh, this is just a standard language model. Uh, this, this is uh, the way that we compute the, the data and it just feeds the text and uh, calculates how to learn how to talk like Shakespeare. So, And there was a, another slide with uh, the next yes. one. So we, we also have another training model uh, which is uh, uh, machine learning for images and so in this that learning model, we actually use uh, a data set from the University of Toronto, which is uh, called uh, Cypher 10. So Cypher 10 is a group of 60,000 images in 10 categories, airplane, automotive, uh, bird, cat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so for each and every word, we have 6,000 images. This uh, standard uh, learning model for a machine for, for images is called VGG19, because normally it has 19 layers, but we actually are training it now on uh, 
over than 30 layers. So we do a lot more interpolation for the images. We run filters, we run all sorts of things to kind of uh, uh, mask the images and even get more accuracy and more data. And really what it does, it feeds these little images of, uh, of concepts that are completely different one from each other until the learning process uh, uh, compacts it all together and can get all the way to a level of 99% accuracy on this. So it's good to see this as more other than just showing what this piece you can do, these, four, uh, these 4490s, you're actually using it for research and more things like that. And you also said that this you're going to be doing more AI implementation in your software? That's correct. So this machine, uh, of course it's a good showpiece yeah. for the power supply and for the power, but actually this is the machine that we use in the office for doing training on our models. Uh, we have a very good AI team and uh, what's going to happen is that our prime software, which today is already really good at uh, doing customization, uh, by the end of the year, uh, we'll start implement already uh, direct chat with our brand ambassador, Mera, you can see over her. Uh, and what she will do is she will be able to perform things for you. So you can ask her, my machine is not working properly, please RMA, and she will fill up the RMA form. Or the future is really, you want to start the game and uh, take my mouse and run it, 800 DPI when you start an FPS game and come back to 2400 once I'm out of the game. So this is uh, the way that the future of the software will actually work and that's a vision we're driving to. Okay, awesome. That That's really cool. Like, as, as we all know, AI is going to be the future and it's interesting to find different and I say unique ways to try and implement that, especially like the RMA. So not having to call someone, send an email to someone or wait. It's just going to be fine tuning on tinkering it that you don't get hundreds of thousands of requests because someone has a blue screen because of software. It's going to be hard to try and uh, differentiate between software and hardware faults. So, but yeah, anyway, thank you for um, talking about this. I just want to talk a little bit more about the PSU and then we can check out some other stuff. Thank you. Now, still on the Fusion uh, 1600 watt unit here, there are a heap of connectors on this. Uh, the main thing we want to see is the two 12 volt high power connectors. We have that one, two, and then we have everything else you need. Like this is running the 4490, so for most end users, this is gonna run everything you need. So we'll just get some close-ups on these. I'll throw some B-roll over the top. Now, for those who don't wanna splurge out on this crazy unit, because to be honest, this is gonna be crazy overkill for most of you guys. Like, hell, if you want a reliable PSU, for sure, this one's gonna be for you. Uh, these ones over here, I'm not gonna say they aren't reliable, but they will be cheaper. Obviously, they're not titanium rated. They're not gonna have all that uh, all that crazy, crazy stuff going on. This is the CyberCore 2. Here's, this is running a NIDAC fan. Now those who are into their fans, like the Noctua fans, NIDAC has been around a very, very long time. I mean, do you know these fans are very, very good and they're very, very popular. And especially seeing them in a PSU, you know you're gonna get that good performing, uh, good performing fan in that. So these are 1300 watt, that's actually, actually quite small. If we do a size comparison, we can see how how small that is compared to the 1600 watt. So be careful, the 1600 watt might not fit in a lot of cases. Uh, this one is platinum, obviously the Fusion was titanium. Then we have some more over here, we have a 1200 watt gold, uh, we have an 850 watt gold, and we have a cyber gold over here. So obviously the price tier, um, I'm not sure on prices at the moment, uh, this will definitely be the most expensive, and then we'll uh, slowly go down the tier from the Cybercore 2, and then going on things like the reactor, and then so on. Uh, another thing I want to check out now is we did do a special build for uh, our XPG. Unfortunately, they only had one chassis, so we're going to have to look at our build. I don't have an empty case, so let's walk over and check it out. Now, moving over to some of the cases that uh, XPG have, this is their Battle Cruiser 2. Now, this is the build I did. I wanted to do something clean, nothing too over the top. Obviously, uh, ADATA are showing off their new XPG chassis. There's no point cutting it up, uh, changing it, uh, manipulating it. They just wanted something clean, something that, that uh, stood out. Originally, they were just gonna go with an all-in-one cool build, but I kind of pushed them to do something in a custom loop because, hey, I can tell you, there's probably uh, hundreds and hundreds of all-in-one cool builds here from all the different vendors, apart from like the real modding areas. But here, I wanted something a little bit different because there are cases out here that have all-in-one coolers. So when you're standing back, this just really brings uh, brings people's attention in and they can come and check it out. Uh, so some things like I added the mirror here, added the mirror on the back now, obviously you don't get that mirror. It is going to be hard to show you what this case is about and how it looks in its stock form because this is very new and this is the one of one prototype they have. They don't have any more yet but as you can see we have room for a 360 up the top. This is a 30mm uh, bits power. We have a 40mm bits power in the front and then we can see we still have quite a bit of room. 
Uh, we are running an ATX motherboard and it does take EATX as well. Uh, GPU wise, we have no issues here. As you can see, there is plenty of room on this case. Um, I'll probably speak to ADAR and see if they can send me one. You guys are going to send me one to review? Sweet, so they'll send me one, one to review. I can do all my typical uh, GPU measurements, uh, radiator thicknesses, radiator lengths, all that stuff. And this unit it at is actually running the PSU we just talked about, the 1600 watt monster. And that even does fit in this case. So even though it's quite small, it's nothing massive, it does fit large units. Uh, the cables I used on this were of course the cable and cables that do look very nice. Uh, I use a lot of them. And you might be running what this uh, custom reservoir is. This custom reservoir is from Radical Customs. Uh, he's in the US. Uh, he does awesome different reservoirs. If you need a reservoir with a logo, a reservoir that looks different, you just tell him some ideas and he'll mock up a design. Uh, it does look a little bit empty. We are trying to still fill this. It's been really busy. But as you can see, it does say the XPG. And then I added some mirror back on the back of that reservoir but in terms of other support on this case both of the top panel and the front panel are removable it's going to be very hard to uh, remove this now because it is all fixed in and then the actual PSU shroud is nice it does slide uh, forwards and back depending on how big your PSU is I have all fixed it down because I added a cover strip so I cannot adjust that now one other thing I do want to talk about is this little unit here um, now it doesn't actually look like this it's just a square box here so this is just a little controller, it's called the Prime Box. Now this is your ARGB and your PWM controller. So you saw on the TV just behind us before when we were covering the PSU, all of uh, XPG's ecosystem connects to the Prime software. So if you're just running the PSU, it runs into a onboard USB header and then you install their Prime software and you can control the PSU. Now if you want to control uh, their fans and that, you can buy their Prime Box. You don't have to buy the Prime Box if you don't want to, if you're using their fans. They can run independently and you can control them via the motherboard. But this Prime Box does a lot. Once you install their software, you can control the fans, you can change, you can control the RGB and all of that. And it all comes in the one software. So we've seen that from other brands and it just all works in their ecosystem. And I'm using that in this system here. And that's what the case is doing. The PSU is connected uh, independently to the motherboard, but it all works in their software. And also the memory as well is picked up in the Prime software as well. So you simply just go like left and right, it shows you the PSU, the next one's the memory, and then the next one is the Prime box. So it just all works in the ecosystem. So what we're gonna do now is jump over and check out some uh, check out some memory and we'll talk about what we're using here. I just wanted to uh, ask one more question to XVG. Do you have any release dates or um, prices on this chassis? Uh, yes. It will launch uh, second part of this year. Okay, so second half of this year and a price? Not. Uh, no. Okay, pr price is not ready yet. So second, second half of this year and price is still uh, to be advised. So let's check out more on this memory that's used in this build. So as you saw in the build we're just looking at, I did use the Caster RGB memory. It is really nice, the RGB works, uh, works really well and it complements the whole design and the amount of LEDs, I'm not sure how many LEDs they've used in it, but I'll get some top down shots so we can see there's no hotspots. Uh, there's nothing worse than setting up your RGB system and you get a heap of hotspots in the memory where uh, you can see the actual individual LEDs and it just doesn't look good. It's not uniform and you don't get that solid layer of RGB running across the memory. And this one goes up to 1700, uh, 1700 uh, MTs, which is pretty sweet. And of course it is overclocked. They have a system over there that's running um, 9000, which, which is just nuts. And that's running completely stable. And moving over to some of their other memory so this is their lancer so we have the caster we have the lancer which is kind of similar it just has a little bit of rgb uh, that comes down into the middle whereas the caster has rgb that sort of runs down the sides as well and this one comes in white does it come in black as well does this come in black as well or just white yes yeah so the lancer comes in both black and white you all know i do love my white builds so having that in a white option is going to be really really good and now this one's kind of interesting to me I'm not really into anime, but a lot of people do love their anime. Now, you might be wondering who this is. Now, this is Mira, M-E-R-A, not to get confused with Mira. Now, this is uh, XBG sort of, uh, you, you designed this character. Yes. This is, is this your mascot? Uh, ambassador. Ambassador. So, this is just a made up, or is it a real person? Uh, no. Made up? <laughs> made up, okay. So, there's no one out there that exists as Mira, so this is completely made up. And what we're gonna check out, we're gonna look at some laptops and check out a whole themed setup that is based around uh, Mira 
and this is the Lancer so it is going to be the same as these two and the speeds are the same as well 7200 so let's look at some uh, laptops that also have a game that you can play a mirror in and then we'll look at a whole mirror setup as well now this is their Xenia 15G laptop of course it's running the latest i7 we have a 13700H and then that's paired with an RTX 4070 laptop GPU um, I might get them to find out the wattage can you ask someone what the wattage of that GPU is and we can come back to that uh, you might be wondering what is on the screen here now as we said before you can actually play a game it will be out on Steam uh, this uh, game is uh, co-designed with Dark uh, Deception and it's a game you can play it will be out on Steam uh, if you come here it's gonna be hard for you guys watching obviously you're not gonna jump on a plane to head over here but you can get this uh, Steam code I won't show you that because someone will just copy that Steam code but there is a Steam code on these cards that are over here so if you grab one of these you're at Computex you can grab these Steam codes and you can download the game and play that when it comes out and of course because they collaborated together this mirror ambassador the theme they're going with is actually in this game so you can play this character I'm not sure really what you do it just looks like you walk around and unlock uh, unlock areas it's nothing crazy it's just a little sweet little game that they collaborated with these are their gen 5 we have the one over here is the legend 970 this will be out uh, roughly next next month I don't have any price on these units yet now the one over here the legend 970 is a a Fizen controlled unit. We have the 10,000 read and 10,000 write. So that's pretty much standard that a lot of uh, units are doing. Uh, some brands already have some out already. But what's interesting is you may have seen some sneak peeks of some brands that are releasing some Gen 5 units that are doing 14,000 read and 12,000 write. Now these ones are using the Silicon Motion Controller and I'm not sure if we, we even had any of those in Gen 4. I remember Gen 4 was all the Fizens, the E18 and so on. So this is using silicon motion and that is really interesting. Now what is even more interesting is the Project Neon Storm, is what XVG are calling it. This one is a liquid, uh, a liquid controlled unit. If we take a look back behind me, we have a big giant uh, mock-up of one here. And it's being water cooled, it's not like there's an in and an out where coolant is flowing. There's coolant in it but it's being pushed around sort of with a fan and it sort of generates those bubbles. I don't really know the technology behind it, but that's how it's work. it works. And ADATA are saying there is over 20% better heat dissip uh, dissipation than running just a standard heatsink. Now I did reach out to these guys, hey, what happens if I have a motherboard that already has its own heatsink? Now, they don't recommend, they 100% don't recommend running these without a, uh, without a heatsink at all. Uh, running it on the stock motherboard heatsink, unless it's a new motherboard that comes with a tower M.2 cooler we've seen, I think we've seen MSI has a real thick one, but running one on the standard flat motherboard one, they really do not recommend this. They said maybe you might get about three minutes out of your SSD. So we definitely do not want to do that. So you can remove both of these, that's what I wanted to ask, but I'm sure I'm sure ADATA may have some other ones that come with a flatter heatsink because mainly these will interfere, especially if people are doing water cooled custom loops. But that's the problem with having these massive, uh, these massive heatsinks because they can't get in the way of water blocks and so on. But yeah, it's really sweet to see these two units. And the uh, Neon Storm, I've been told, won't be out till sometime next year. So stay tuned for that. It is sort of an early design, but the uh, Legend uh, 970 will be out uh, sometime next month. Alrighty, as you can see, we are now at the mirror themed lifestyle setup. So we have the case, the keyboard, the mouse, the mouse pad, the headset, and if you're lucky enough, you can even buy the pillow over there. Now let me just take a little bit more, a closer look at this case. This is the Avala Air Mirror Edition. I'm probably not gonna say Mirror Edition for everything, because this is all Mirror Edition. Uh, this case did win the red dot winner of 2023, obviously this year. This is now when Computex is. Uh, you can see it's got the theme, it's going to be pink. I'm not sure how many guys are going to be into this uh, into this type of theme, but I'm sure there's some of you out there who will appreciate this. It's hard to see inside the case, but it is uh, it is ATX, ATX support. So it looks like your standard ATX support. It will fit a full-size GPU. And then we have, of course, the cutouts on the front, which is pretty cool, because that shows really the XPG uh, design language with those cutouts in there. And then we have the uh, standard keyboard, which is the XPG uh, Seeker, but being the mirror one, it is slightly different. And I think the difference is uh, some of the graphics on the side and just the keycaps are uh, themed as well. Now moving over to the mouse, this is the slingshot. Once again, themed exactly the uh, same as the keyboard, the case, and then we have the headset as well. Do we have uh, any ETA on when this will, uh, people can purchase this whole setup? Very soon? Yeah. Okay, so very soon, you got that. So now we have Seeker uh, in the market right 
Okay, so Seeker. Okay, so they've got some of this stuff in the market now, but it's obviously not mirror uh, themed. And then we have some over here. I can't read most of this, but they actually have some uh, collaboration with a uh, chocolate company that is going to be sold in Taiwan only. Okay, so for those who do know, so City Number One. Okay, so. So if you're familiar with that, unfortunately, being not Taiwanese, I'm not sure about this brand. But Taiwanese people, they will know about this. Yeah. Okay, so if you do like chocolates, you can get that whole mirror. Well, they can buy this um, in a convenience store. Okay, so you can get this in convenience store as well. So if you're interested in that, that's definitely going to be up your alley. But uh, anyway, I think that is going to be everything at the ADATA XPG booth. I do want to thank ADATA for uh, sending me over to check all this stuff out. I hope you like the PSU, the memory, the SSDs, the build I did. And uh, yeah, that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.